If you've ever wanted to become a data extraction wizard, this is the place. Puppeteer is a Node.js library that makes it possible to control headless browsers and scrape the web. You can use web scraping to get price data, product reviews, contact info, and more. Unfortunately, sites often try to block scrapers or bots from accessing their content. Bright Data is sponsoring this video, and they have a scraping browser that uses AI to bypass bot detection systems, and the scraping browser can also get around blocks like CAPTCHAs. They also allow you to scale with unlimited browsers at once. But before we learn about that, let's learn how Puppeteer works. Works. The first step is to install Puppeteer in your project folder. Now let's write our first script. Create a new file in your project folder named scraper.js. This is where the magic happens. Like pulling a rabbit out of a hat, except a rabbit is data and our hat is a website. First, let's make sure we require Puppeteer. Okay, we have a new async run function that we then run down here. And inside, let's create a browser and then a try, catch, and finally block. That's, this is where we're going to do all our web scraping. If we have a problem with our scraping, we want to just throw an error, run failed. And then at the end, we want to make sure we close the browser. And here is where we're going to start doing our web scraping. We'll use Puppeteer to launch our browser. Then we'll create a new page in the browser. This is basically how you start everything in Puppeteer. And now we'll set the default navigation timeout to two minutes. Now we have to say what page we're going to go to. Well, let's scrape some YouTube data. Let's try to scrape all the trending videos on YouTube. So we'll go to the trending YouTube page. And now we can just evaluate the page and get the document element, the outer HTML. So basically we're getting the HTML of the whole page. Finally, we can log the HTML. So let's just run this for now and see what happens. So nodescraper.js. And we get the HTML of the whole page. Now that's something, but not quite exactly what we want. Let's see if we can get a list of each trending video, both the title and the channel name. Well, we can use Puppeteer to get specific elements in the page. But to find the elements, let's use the Chrome Dev Tools. So I can open this up and I can just go to one of the elements here. Now we can see all the CSS selectors here and we'll find which CSS selectors we want to get with Puppeteer. If I hover over this, I can see ID of meta. So let's start off by getting all the elements that have an ID of meta, and then we can search inside those elements for things like the video title and the channel name here. So first let's make a variable with the CSS selector, the ID of meta. And then we can do page.wait for selector, and then we'll put that in. So this is something that Puppeteer does, and it will just wait until the selector is loaded on the page. And now we can get the contents of that selector of the meta ID. So we can use something kind of like jQuery. So if you use one dollar sign, it's going to get the first element with that ID. But if you use two dollar signs, it's going to get all the elements with this ID. So we're going to get every element with this ID and put it into the elements variable. Now let's just create an empty array that we'll use to store the video data we get. And we are going to loop through every element that we got on the page. And let's get access to the individual element. And now we're going to wait for the element with the ID video title and the element with the ID channel name. So first we're going to check if there is a title element variable. And if there is, we will get the inner text dot trim and we'll just trim that off. If not, it'll be a blank string. Same thing for the channel element. So now we have the title and the channel from the page and we can just push it onto our video array. And finally, we can console.log the videos. So let's try that out. And here we go. We can see this list of every video in the trending videos on YouTube. Now you can just run the scraper every day and then you now know what you should make your video about because you know what the trending topics are. But if we're running this all the time, it's possible that YouTube or another site we're running this on will realize we're a, blot, a bot and start blocking our scraper. So let me show you how to use the scraper browser from Bright Data. So first, create an account on Bright Data using the link in this video's description. If you use my link, they'll even credit your account with some money. And then you just find out where it says Scraping Browser. You'll have to click this toggle to turn it on, and then I'll just go to the Access Parameters. And then we'll use some information from the Access Parameters page in our code. First of all, instead of using Puppeteer, we can now use Puppeteer Core. That's the automation library without the browser. So at the top, let's put an auth variable. So we're going to need the username and password from our Bright Data dashboard. So I got that pasted in. And now we're going to make some very minor changes to this code here. We're going to change this to use a browser WebSocket endpoint. And this URL comes right from the dashboard. Okay, that's it. Now I can run my code again.
and I get the exact same information. But now I get all the benefits of running with a proxy browser. And all that was just with one browser. Bright Data allows you to scrape web data with hundreds of browsers all at the same time. And you can now put web scraper developer on your resume. Thanks for watching.